Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I created this Love You to Pieces wall art using little puzzle pieces. So let's get to crafting. Now let's talk about the supplies that I use so that you can get an overall idea of what you can use to create your project. My first item is a puzzle, and I've purchased this puzzle. I got this at Target. You can get your puzzles from anywhere. Uh, you may already have one at home, maybe one that's missing some pieces, and then you can recycle it for this project. Uh, you just want to keep an eye on how many pieces it contains and uh, also the overall size. This is a really small uh, size puzzle. It's about a 13 by 14, and it's 500 pieces, so obviously the little pieces were going to be kind of small. And if you look on the side of the boxes, they normally have a little uh, example drawn out there about the average size or pretty much the size of the uh, little puzzle pieces so you can go by that now I picked this small one because uh, I'm going to make a small project but if you want to uh, do a much larger frame than what I did then maybe you want to go with larger pieces that is going to be completely up to you all right, so we're also going to be needing some sort of a base or a frame for our little puzzle heart. I'm using this one here. This is just a wall art that I happened to find on clearance. And it does have a little message here that says, Every Bunny Welcome. So this was from Easter, but I'm going to change this up. So anything like this can be used. If you want to use an actual frame with a glass, you can go ahead and use that instead. I also have this little sign to give you an idea of what else you can use. This is something that I have left over from Christmas. I bought this from the Dollar Tree. It has something on here that I used for another project. Uh, but this would be great to use also to uh, put our little puzzle pieces on there. We can just paint it and it will be ready to go. So next item. All right, you'll also need to uh, choose some ribbon or some string, maybe even some yarn if that's what you want to use. I'm using this particular uh, ribbon. I got this from Hobby Lobby in case you're wondering. It is a one and a half inch by 30 foot roll. Uh, it was $7.99, but I got it half off for $4. But anyway, this is the ribbon that I'm going to be using. And I'm also going to be using this twine to coordinate with it because the frame that I uh, want to use has this color around the edge. And I think it'll look lovely all put together. I also have these two little flowers. You can use whatever you like. You don't even have to put any flowers or anything on there. I also have a little scrap of some uh, greenery here. This is like an ivy. So I'm going to use this to decorate my frame. I will be using some paints for my puzzle pieces and on my frame. So I've got some pink. I've got red, white, and black. And these are just acrylic craft paints that you can find anywhere. All right, so here I have some brushes. I'm going to need these to do uh, my painting. I also have a nice liner brush here that I'm going to use for doing some lettering. It is completely up to you if you want to do some lettering, so make sure you just pick your appropriate brushes for your project. I also have a little bit of a sponge here because I'm going to try out using that in case uh, I don't find that the brushes are really helping, so I'll use this as well. I also have a wider brush that I'm going to be using that I'm not showing here. Here I have a ruler because I'm going to need to do some little measurement. I have a pencil so that I can draw a um, little heart and I'm also going to use it for my lettering. Of course I need to scrap a piece of paper to create a template. These are the tools that I'll also be using. I've got my wire cutters, scissors, I have my glue gun with plenty of glue sticks. All right, so here I have some puzzle pieces that I've laid out on my little puppy pad here. Um, I don't know exactly how many puzzle pieces I'm going to need to form my little heart shape. So I'm just going to paint several of them for now. And if I need more, I'll just paint them later. So I've already painted some white and I used my brush to paint them. And then I started on the pink and then I realized I haven't tried out using the little sponge. So I went ahead and I tried this. So I'll show you that in a minute. And these here will next be painted in red. Now I have them all with the cardboard side over. You could paint the uh, print side if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I felt like uh, the cardboard side would be best because the paint would get absorbed into the cardboard and therefore it wouldn't like wipe off. And I feel like on this little slick side, it, it might wipe off a little too easily. And also I've only done one coat of, on the white and the pink so far. And I think that's what all I'm going to do. Now, if you want a more colorful look on them, you can do a second coat, but I suggest you do a light coat. Let it dry completely before you add another layer of paint because you don't want these to have a really thick layer of paint on them because it is cardboard, it's paper, so they will warp on you. So make sure that you don't wet them too much with too much paint. Okay, so what I was doing is I was taking a uh, piece of puzzle like that and I'm using my brush. I first started off by just putting my finger on the little head on one side of the puzzle 
and then just brushing that and then leaving it, grabbing the next one and painting it. And then when that was dry, I came back and then I did that unpainted little head part right there. And then therefore I didn't have to get my hands all dirty. But then I ended up, I only was getting my finger dirty actually. Uh, but then I decided that, you know what, I don't need to do that. So I decided that I would just pick them up since I was getting paint on my fingers anyway. Just paint them in my hand, putting them down. I was also putting them on the paper down here and painting them there. So there you go, works great either way. You could take a sponge, get some paint, same thing and then just sponge paint it like that pick it up put it over next one and just keep going and that works pretty quick so uh, just choose what you want to do there's the brush there was the uh, sponge super easy look at that again let them dry and then come back and do another layer I'm not going to do that because I really like the cardboard color coming through them because I'm going to do like a farmhouse shabby chic kind of look if you want a more you know modern like I said a more colorful look then of course you know add more paint to your puzzle pieces all right so I'm going to finish painting all my pink and then I'm going to paint these in my red paint and then I'll come back and show you how they're all done and they'll be completely dry also I've been putting my fan on here to let them dry, but I forgot that I also bought this little heat gun. It's an air, you know, hot air. So uh, I was using that as well to kind of help me dry them. They dry pretty quick if you do a thin layer, okay? So you don't need that. Now, I was afraid this was going to blow everything all over the place. It didn't. It works really great. Uh, so I just recommend if you want to use a little hot air gun, someone to uh, recommend that to me. So I did order that. Okay, everyone, I'll be back when these are all done. Okay, so while my little puzzle pieces are drying up, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the next stage, which is my frame or, you know, or sign, whatever we decide to use, a little wall art, or maybe even a little canvas. Uh, now, my sign has a beautiful little border. I really love it. At least it's beautiful to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I really like it. So all I have to do is really just paint right in here to cover up the lettering here. Now, I could go and print some lettering that I like, a nice little message that will go inside of here within a heart that I'm going to form on here. And just decoupage that right on top. Just cut around it and just decoupage it right in here after I've painted it. But I'm going to go ahead and do the lettering uh, by drawing it out with a pencil. And then I'm going to use some black paint. But before that, of course, I'm going to paint this. Now, I, like I said, I really like this border. But I'm going to go ahead and paint over it because obviously not everyone out there that's looking at my video is going to have a frame like mine that happens to have this particular border on it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it as if it was just a plain one that everybody just doesn't like the whole thing that's on there and you just paint it right over it. And of course you'd want to tape along here if you don't want to paint the frame part of it and you just wanted to paint this part. So it all depends on what you have and what you want to paint and what you don't want to paint, okay? Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use a nice uh, straight edge or flat brush to paint and I'm not even going to worry about the paint getting like really perfectly along the edges because I am going to cover this, okay? But what I'm going to do is just going to put a, a layer of the white on here. And then I'm going to put maybe one or two, maybe even three layers in this center part because I really want these letters to be covered up. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually use a bigger brush to fill in all this. And I'm just going to use this nice flat brush to kind of help me not get too close and not paint the side of the uh, frame because it, it goes upward here. And I want that beautiful kind of rustic look that it already has on there or natural whatever you want to call it okay so I'm going to go ahead and continue painting this and like I said right in the middle give it a couple of coats use my little hot air gun to help me dry it faster and I'll be back hopefully when this is all completely covered the way that I want it okay so I've already gone ahead and I painted it to the point where I'm satisfied with it um, I went ahead and I did a little effect on this side, just on half of it to see if I liked it, and I do. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side now. You don't have to do this. This is completely optional. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a wood look, and it's very simple to do. You're going to take your very thin brush like this, and then you're just going to pick up a little bit of black paint. I've got some black paint on this little bit of paper here. And you're just going to pick up a little bit of black paint and kind of swirl it off a little bit. You just want it kind of on the little tip of it, okay? And then you're just going to go ahead and just make lines up and down and they don't have to be straight and they don't have to be complete. Just separate them like that a little bit. And another one going this way. Clean off any white paint. You know, because mine is not completely dry. 
So I'm cleaning off a little bit of that black paint, and then I'm just going to add a little bit more here. I don't have to go all the way to the edge because this is going to get covered. And of course, I don't have to go all the way down or all the way up over here. And then what I did is I just kind of went like that to kind of give it a little, sort of a wood look. And you could leave it like that if you want, like make little knots, little wood knots, just like that. Kind of wiggle your lines a little bit. This does not have to be perfect. I think anybody could do this. So you just want to do that, okay? And then you're going to take a white brush like this one. And you're going to pick up a little bit of the paint. And then just wipe off as much as you can. You just want some paint on the brush. And then you're just going to run it over what you've done. And this, you can smear it as much as you want or not as much. So there you go. This one was a little bit more smeared, so a little more gray here, and this was a little bit less, so that kind of gives you an idea. And then just clean off the brush ever so often. I'm cleaning it on a, the same little sheet of paper that I have the black paint on. And then I'm just gonna smear it a little bit more. As you can see, all you gotta do is just some lines and then some little squiggles, and that's it. That'll give it that little kind of a wood texture. All right, so now we're gonna let this dry, and we'll be back. Okay, so my next step is to mark uh, where my ribbon's gonna go. Now, I wouldn't have to do this, except that I wanna know how much space I actually, I'm actually going to have there. So I'm just gonna make some little pencil marks. And then here as, as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this side and that. Okay, so now I'm just taking a straight edge and just kind of lightly marking, just connecting the little dots that I've made here and there and making a line. It's hard to see it on here, but I've made a pencil line, a little square around so that I know how much space I have here. So this is where my heart's going to go. Now I'm not going to worry too much about where the outer edge of my heart's going to be. If some of my little puzzle pieces happen to lay over my ribbon trim, that'll be, that'll be fine. Now I can go ahead and just glue this on here and I don't have to draw that little square, you know, whatever trim you're going to put on, on the inside if you decide to do that. Uh, you can go ahead and do that now. But the reason that I'm not putting it down is because I'm actually going to use uh, just a craft paint to paint the uh, words that I want to have in here inside of my little heart. Now if I was going to use a marker or something, I probably wouldn't worry about it too much. But just in case I make a mistake or something and I have to repaint the whole thing, I won't have the ribbon or whatever trim I put on here. Uh, in the way so it's best to just do this before you put anything on there also I'm going to take a piece of paper just so you know like a print uh, just plain paper or even a from a notebook pad tear out a pe pe ah, excuse me tear out a page okay so I folded it you know from the uh, you know the longer side over like that in half and then I'm going to use uh, also I'm going to mark here where the pencil line is right there and then I'm going to mark about right about halfway. I'm going to place about halfway and mark, you know, how far out I can go. So this gives me like a little space here where I can actually just kind of draw a little heart shape with my pencil and then just cut that out. Okay, so just going to start cutting that out. I don't have to follow my pencil line. That's just a little guide. Okay, so that's my heart. I'm going to check it out on here, and that is nice. So now I can go ahead and trace it with my pencil. It doesn't have to be straight because the puzzle pieces are going to hide all that. Okay, now that I have my heart and I don't know if you can see it but I've drawn a heart inside the space there so now that I have that I want to write in here uh, love you to pieces those are the words that I'm going to be using and I think I'm going to use this uh, straight edge as well and just draw a very light line where I want my words to kind of be now you could just Write them in as you know freehand. You don't have to draw any lines. You could choose to maybe use a rub on if you find something cute that you can just stick on there. Use a stencil or whatever you want to use for that. So I'm going to go ahead and write love on here. Make it kind of fancy. 
I could just use some straight letters, but I'm going to use a little bit of cursive. So there it says love. All right. And then you two, and then pieces. Got my eye, I'm going to do a little heart. Just like that. Okay, I hope that you can see what I, how I wrote that on there, but that is what I'm writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black paint and my uh, thin uh, straight brush, the uh, liner brush, and I'm going to just paint right over that, let it dry, and I'll be back. Again, you could choose to use a Sharpie to do this, or maybe some rub-ons, or print out some lettering, cut it out, decoupage it on there, whatever you want to do. Maybe you have a, a cute little card, a little Valentine's card if you want to use that, uh, or any other love message that might go with the, uh, you know, the whole puzzle and love kind of theme. Um, another thing you could write on here is maybe like a family is the fills the pieces to the heart or, or are the pieces in the heart or something like that. You know, whatever you want to put on there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. And I think I'm also going to go ahead and outline the heart with a black paint. But I think I want to do some like little scrolly bits. But I'll decide that after I've painted this. So I'll be back after I have done that. And then you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I've been doing these little swirlies, and I'm not worried about the paint, um, you know, if it's really just getting on there or not, or it's getting like a little bit faded, that's fine. Um, I want it to look a little worn, so I'm just doing it in different directions. It doesn't matter how you do them, if you want to do this. I just want to give a little background to where I'm going to end up putting my puzzle pieces. Now some of this might be behind the ribbon, that's okay. And I'm just calling it a squirrely. You can call it whatever you want. Little squirrels. Okay, just like that. That's all I'm going to do. I think that looks really cute. Now, I'm going to start um, hot gluing my puzzle pieces along here. But I'm going to give this a little chance to dry just so I make sure that I don't get my finger into the paint and then smear it everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to start gluing this trim onto my frame before I put my little puzzle pieces because I don't want my puzzle pieces to end up underneath. Uh, well, this is a ribbon, not a trim, but anyway, it's either a trim or a ribbon or a scrap piece of paper or fabric, whatever you want to use if you want to do that. Uh -huh. Okay, so I don't want my, like I said, I don't want the puzzle pieces to end up underneath it, so I'm going to put this first. Let me get some more glue on my glue gun. Okay, I'm going to start by the inside edge here, and I'm going to do a little bit of time so that the glue does not dry too quickly on me. And I want to make sure I get the fabric right on the edge and then I can do the other end over here or put it on the actual edge of the ribbon here there we go and I could just cut it right here also just to the length cut another piece to fit there and there and then here of course I'm going to try something uh, instead of that and then complete this little corner here and I'm going to fold this down to meet up, let's see, I tried it earlier, okay, I folded it right on the edge like that, and then this gets folded like a little 45 degree angle right there. So what you want to do is you want to put some glue right underneath there so that stays down like that. Okay, now we can continue putting the rest of the ribbon down. I also want to make sure that I put some here and then make sure that I get that piece down. Okay, so that gives me that cute little edge there. I'm going to continue doing this go all the way around and then over here and then I'll just when I get to the end over here I'll show you how I uh, finish off the edge it'll be really simple okay so I'm getting to the end here so I'm just going to cut this a little bit beyond the edge of the frame I'm 
my uh, scissors aren't that great anymore. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to fold this in so that it's right at the length right here. Oops, let's get that folded straight actually. I don't want to glue it down all the way, okay? You just want to glue it down just a certain point because you want to work on this edge here. So once you've got it, fold it like that, and then you're going to make a little corner to mimic the corners that you made over here. And then you want to glue all that down so it doesn't come apart. So let's glue that first flap down. And then from this little top corner here, downward to meet the edge of this. So then we want to glue that bit down to itself, it's creating that little corner like that. And then we can glue that down. Now, just gluing it at an angle here, create a little triangle there, glue, and there we go. And then you can finish off the little edges here where it didn't get glued down. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a little bit, you know, it's not going to be perfectly straight. Of course, if you want to take the time and do that, of course, you, you'll be able to do that. But I, I like the way that looks. It looks very homemade. It looks really pretty, you guys. I love it. Okay. So now we're going to start putting our puzzle pieces. So let me get those here. I've got my glue gun ready, and let's get to doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to start putting a little bit of glue on each little piece. Start laying it down wherever I want. I'm going to start with the red ones first. Now, I'm not going to lay them necessarily in a straight line. They can be a little bit scattered back and forth. And then I'll fill in between them with a the pink and then the white. And some can be on top of each other. Oops, let's get that down there. Okay, I want to get just a little bit of glue on each one so I don't have these little messes. But anywhere you have a little mess, you can put another puzzle piece on top of that, okay? There we go. Like I said, it may end up being on top of the ribbon, and that is all right. Also, another thing uh, you might want to do is maybe don't use the, um, the puzzle pieces that have like a straight edge on them. Try to use the ones that have, you know, shape all the way around it. A little cut out all the way around it because they look fine but I think it would have been best if I didn't use any with a little straight edge okay so now I'm layering some white ones on top and I'm trying not to go too wide but it's okay if I do and once when I see that you know it looks like it's enough I will stop Try not to go too thick or too far out because then you'll lose the shape of the heart. You really want to be able to see that. And you do want to be able to notice that, you know, it's all little puzzle pieces. So, again, you don't want to lose, you know, the look of the, uh, the puzzles, puzzle shapes. You don't want them to get lost within, you know, the form here. And I'm trying to find some that don't have a little straight edge now. Before I was just grabbing, so it was a little bit easier, but now I'm making sure that I don't. Okay, so I put all the little pieces that I wanted. I kind of covered up a little bit of my scrolls. That's okay, but that is what it looks like. I think that looks so pretty, so you let me know what you think, and um, you decide what you want to do if you like this, um, the red, pink, and the white. Maybe you want to do them all red or one, just one color, whatever you want to do, or maybe, I mean, if you find a puzzle that maybe has some little hearts already on them, on them you know, like the little print, the design, or something, that you like maybe you can just use those pieces as they look and you don't have to paint them at all all right so we're going to go ahead and go to the next step and i want to make something where i can hang this from so i'm going to make a bit of string here but first on the one end i'm going to make a nice thick knot and i probably should have gotten a thicker string for this but well i'm going to go ahead and work with this make a knot so that i can glue it from behind and about so much and then give it enough length here to cut or to, rather to make the knot on the other end okay so once I have those knots I can hot glue this from behind or I can glue it in the front let's see 
Hmm. Let's just do it from behind. I just realized this is the top of the frame. <laughs> it's got this little thing right here where I could hang it from. I guess I did it backwards. It doesn't matter. We're going to put a little string to hang it from anyway. So we're putting some hot glue there. We'll put our knots there and I'll probably come back and put some more glue on top of those knots just to make sure that they're sealed in there. Okay, so now I'm going to create a little bow with the ribbon that I had and the twine. And I went ahead and I looked through my ribbons and I found that I had this pink gingham and then I had just this sheer red. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use those as well. I also switched up my scissors because the others weren't too sharp. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off that little edge. It's all nasty. Let's make a nice edge over here too. Oh, we're actually going to trim that so we're not going to worry about it. So let's go ahead and just cut out some pieces and then we're just going to kind of alternate them on top of each other. So I'm going to cut what, maybe about, I don't know, eight inches. I just cut however many pieces. I think I'll cut two of the same one here. I really love that ribbon. And I'll cut a piece of this one. And maybe two of this, just to make sure it shows up. And I'm going to go ahead and take these also give a little dovetail so I have to fold it side cut upward towards the edge to give you that little little dovetail little V cut inside of it okay let's do all of them Okay, so this other little ribbon is too thin uh, to cut that little V, so I'm just going to do a little angle cut like that on the ends, or you can just leave them, you know, straight cut, but I like to do this. All right, I'm just going to put them all together. You could, you know, angle them in different ways, but I mean, they still end up being the same way, so this is just the way that I do it, and then cut however many little pieces of string you want on it. And then I'm going to cut an extra one, nice long one here, put them all together, crinkle them up. You can use some floral wire, chenille stem or something like that, but I'm going to use this extra long piece that I cut and just tie it around all of them and just knot it. And then I'm just going to do a little bow tie like that little, tie up a little bow I should say and then you could just spread out the other uh, ribbons see just like that so you know you don't have to lay them in different angles I see a lot of people doing that and that looks really nice and you can do that of course but just showing you that you know you just lay them on top of each other and you can do the same effect but there we go okay so I'm gonna take this and just pull it up where I feel the center will be and then I'm going to glue this right to the back of this bow. So I'm laying the bow facing down so that I can put this on there. And then I'm going to get another piece of string about, I don't know, six inches or so. And then you're going to also knot the ends together to make a loop. So you have a loop like that. See that? I'll put it against the white here. Make a loop. I'm going to make two Two knots just so it's a little bit thicker here where the knot is and I'm going to glue that down also onto the glue and then more glue on top just to make sure everything gets sealed in we're gonna let that dry and we're almost done all right this is dry so we can turn it back around and you can see how cute that is looking so I have these flowers here these little tulips and a little bit of this ivy and I want to decorate it a little bit more, so I think I'd like to put these on the corner down here. I was thinking about putting them up here, but I feel like uh, I've already got this bow up here, so I feel like there's a lot going on up here. And I could actually leave them off, but I really want to use them. So I'm going to put them right about here, maybe one going upward, and then the greenery right there. Okay, so I need to trim this, so I'm going to use my wire cutters. Now these things are going to get cut off, so I'll just pull them off and then I'll glue them back. I need to cut it fairly short. Oops, sorry about that. I cut that off. 
There we go. About so long. I'll glue them down. I think I'll glue them on the inside here. Right there. And then I'll just take these leaves and they got a little bit messed up so I'm just going to trim them. Put some glue. There we go. And now we can cover this up with these little ivies here. So I'm going to pull them off here. Actually, these little bits here, because I don't really need this whole stem. And I can actually um, also cut them away from each other. They'll be a little more controllable that way. So I'll put the larger ones down first. One last one. Tuck it right in here to cover up all of that. There we go. And our pretty little sign is complete. All right, everyone, I have completed my sign. I went ahead and I took some more of that jute. I got about three strings and I created another little bow, which I added to that little corner there just to finish that off. I felt like it wasn't quite finished. The greenery looked a little bit, you know, kind of just stuck on top of each other. So I felt like the little bow kind of added a little bit something without adding too much more ribbon. But that's what it looks like. I think it looks absolutely cute. It's really pretty. Uh, I'm going to use that hot um, air gun, the one that I bought, to I'll blow on it a little bit more and get rid of the uh, hot glue little spider webs <laughs> or just little webs of glue. Uh, someone had suggested that I should just do that. Uh, use my uh, blow dryer, but I don't have a blow dryer. I haven't had one for quite some time. So I went ahead and ordered that and I'm really happy that I did because now I can do little things like that and dry things up a little bit faster. So I, I recommend you using that. I was using my little fan before, but you know, the little gun actually works a little bit, a little bit better. And you know, it, it helps to get rid of these little webs as well. All right. So there we go. It is complete. So uh, I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up. I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up. Now this can be, you know, it doesn't have to be for Valentine's. It could be for all year long and it could be a nice little gift for someone. They could hang and just be reminded how much you love them because you love them to pieces. <laughs> all right, everyone, uh, leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think of my little creation. Are you going to try this? Have you uh, done something similar? If you have, you can go to my Facebook, uh, Trisha's Creations, and you can actually leave your picture there, post your picture of your creation if it's something similar or if you've done it after I've done, done this. And and you could also leave recipes there if you like. Um, that being said, <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the red subscribe button and then the little bell, which will notify you of when I put up my videos and I try to do them twice a week. So anyway, guys, I hope that you really enjoyed this. Share your social medias, uh, spread the love, be kind to each other, respect each other. As always, enjoy.